Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to Vector Calculus. Now, in today's lecture, we're going to finish off our section on line integrals. Okay, in the previous lectures, we've looked at uh, what a line integral is and its calculations, some of the applications. We've also looked at the so-called fundamental theorem of line integrals for gradient fields. And today, the last section in, in this uh, topic is called Green's Theorem. And I've, I've put in brackets there Green's Theorem in the plane because um, Green's Theorem is a special case of another more general theorem called Stokes's Theorem. Okay, and this is not necessarily in the plane. Okay, so what is Green's Theorem and how is it useful? Well, I'm glad you asked. Before we get to that, a bigger question is, who was Green? Who was he? Well, he was an Englishman. Um, there is no known photograph of George Green, unfortunately, so I'm just presenting his tombstone, a picture of his tombstone. Don't, don't take that. I'm tr not trying to bring the, bring the lecture theatre down. But George, George Green was the son of a miller, and uh, in fact, this is a picture of the mill where he grew up. And the mill is still standing. So even though George Green is, is gone, uh, the, the Green legacy keeps on. Now, some interesting facts about George Green. He only had two years of schooling, grades three and four. Uh, he entered... Cambridge as a 40-year-old undergraduate, and he was up until then completely self-taught. Uh, according to the record, he fathered seven illegitimate children. And Einstein, quote, was, uh, quote, when, when asked on, on George Green, was quoted as saying, Green was 20 years ahead of his time. Now, coming from Einstein, that's a big, that's a big statement. So, that's a little bit about the man... But what about the theorem? Well, basically, Green's theorem gives the relationship between a line integral around a simple closed curve and a double integral over a region D that sits in the plane. And in particular, what's the relationship between D and C? Well, C is the boundary, or it bounds the two-dimensional set D. Okay, now, we're going to look at regions that basically are, are simple. Okay, now... There's three curves here. We call a closed curve simple, basically, if it does not intersect itself, like this figure eight. Okay, so this peanut type of curve is a simple region. So is this circle, but this one is not. Okay. Now, when stating Green's theorem, we use the following convention. The positive orientation of a curve C refers to a single counterclockwise or anticlockwise traversal of the curve C. And we, we denote that um, positive or orientation by C plus. And for C minus, we talk about the negative orientation. So in this case, just the direction is reversed. So we have clockwise rotation.
Now, for Green's theorem, if our curve C is, say, parameterized, then a good way of um, setting things up is to always remember that the region D lies on the left, or your left, as you would walk around the path C. Okay? So, to correctly apply Green's theorem, always set up your um, parameterization and your orientation so, such that if you walk around the boundary of your two-dimensional region, the region is always on your left. Now, this is a very simple picture, but it starts getting more complicated when you have a region that has holes in it. Okay? And we'll have a look at that a bit later. Okay? Okay, so... What is Green's theorem? Well, there are two kinds. And basically, Green's theorem is one of the fundamental theorems of vector calculus. It's, it's a huge theorem. Okay? Now, let's just look at it here. I, I've said here that, or I've asked the question, is there a connection between double integrals and line integrals? And yes, Green's theorem does give, give you that connection. But there's a, a lot more going on than just that connection, as we'll see. Okay? All right. So, let curly D be a simple region, and curly C be its boundary. Okay? If the components of this vector field in the plane are continuously differentiable, I guess that should be a curly D there, but you get the idea. Then... The line integral around the closed curve, C, with positive orientation, is equal to the double integral over curly D of this function here. Okay, so you can see I've, I've written the line integral a couple of different ways. But, and here we have a double integral. Okay. So, what's the connection? Well, because C is a closed curve, curly C, this here is the line integral, right, around C. This here is a double integral of the scalar curl, the scalar curl of F. Okay, so here we have circulation of F around C, and here. This is just oh, the scalar curl. Of F. Now we both know that curl and circulation have to have to do with swirling and rotation. Green's theorem gives yet another link between circulation and curl. Okay? Now, why, why is this known as one of the fundamental theorems of vector calculus? Well, that's, that's a good question. See here, we have two integral signs. And we're integrating over some two-dimensional region. Here we only have one integral sign and we're integrating over the boundary. So, you can think of this as a simple fundamental theorem on integration. Okay, of course, the fundamental theorem that you know is the following.
Now, let, let's just compare for a second. Here we have one integral over a region, the interval AB. Here we have one less integral, no integrals. And we're just interested in the boundary of the interval AB. Okay? All right, there's another form of Green's theorem. And this is known as, actually, our Gauss's divergence theorem in the plane. Okay, let's have a look at this. Suppose, again, curly D is a, a simple region, and this time I'm going to denote the boundary by partial D, curly DD. Now, suppose we have a unit outward pointing normal, denoted by this N hat. Uh, if F's uh, smooth enough, then... This path integral here, which we can also write as this line integral, is equal to the double integral of this function here, over D. Okay, so this is a, a, a big theorem too. It's actually equivalent to the previous theorem that I showed you. So what's, what's sort of the underlying idea here. Well, we used this in, th this, these two integrals here when we were calculating flux. Right? We were calculating flux over a closed curve in the plane. Right? And in here, anybody recognise that? Well, it's just the divergence of F. So... also known as Gauss's divergence theorem in the plane. So this is just divergence of F. And up here, this is the the flux of F over the closed curve, which is the boundary of D. Hmm, okay. All right, so like I said, these two theorems not only give a connection between line integrals and double integrals, but they also give a connection between circulation and curl and flux and divergence. Okay? And the two theorems are actually equivalent. I'll show you how that works in a minute. All right, so let's actually do a problem and see how it all works. Okay. Now this may not be in your notes, okay? So you may need to write this down. The, all the um, examples that I gave you in your notes are all worked examples. I have all the solutions there, so I'm not just going to present them in class today because I know you can read, right? Okay. Verify Green's theorem for this line integral where C is the unit circle oriented counterclockwise. Okay, so I'm going to let I denote that line integral. And what it means when they say verify Green's theorem, they mean basically compute the line integral, compute the double integral in Green's theorem, and then show that they're equal. Okay, so let's make out picture of our region. (laughs) 
So you can see here, our region is pretty simple. It will satisfy the conditions of Green's theorem. Okay, and by, by when I say Green's theorem, I mean the first theorem that I that I presented. Okay, um, because that, that's what I'm going to use to verify this um, this uh, particular um, uh, example. Okay, so let's parameterize our curve, curly C. in the following way. So a natural parameterization is just cos t sine t because we've got the unit circle. But up here we've got the differentials. So I'm just going to work with x's, y's, dx's and dy's. Okay, so we have the, the positive orientation. And now all I'm going to do is evaluate that, that line integral. Okay. So along the parameterization, dx is minus sine t dt, and dy is cos t dt. And now essentially all I'm going to do is substitute into the line integral and work things out. Okay, it's going to yield the following. So I replace x with cos t, y with sine t, dx with minus sine t dt, and y a dy with cos t dt. Okay, so I can clean those up and I'll get down to something like this. Okay, so it's not too bad to integrate. You can integrate the first term directly. The second term is just a double angle formula. Okay, so if I integrate here and sub in here, I'll get something like this. Oops, two pi. Okay, so I get pi there. So I've I've done this just the traditional way that where you would evaluate a line integral. Nothing too fancy. But now let's actually go back and employ, I'll put, I'll put this back up in a second, employ this, this part. Let's, let's actually work this out and see if we get equality. See if we get pi. Okay, so in that context, you can think of x, y being your function m. You can think of x being your function n. And see that dn dx equals 1 and dm dy is going to be x.
Okay, so what we do is take those derivatives, put them in here, and integrate over the region. That's all we're doing. And the first thing we need to do is, of course, describe our two-dimensional region D. Okay, so if I sub in for my partials, I'll get something like that. All right. Now, look at our region down here. This is, so D's, D's this disk. Now you would think that, okay, we've got a double integral to do here. Polar coordinates would seem sensible. So let's describe the, the disk in terms of polars. It's not difficult. Okay, I then make the substitution. X equals R cos theta, Y equals R sine theta, and dA, or dx dy, equals R dr d theta. Okay, so I've transferred to polar coordinates now. It's not a, a hugely difficult integration, and um, let's see where it takes us. So we're going to get we're going to get something like um, r squared. Oops, r minus r squared cos theta d r d theta integrate, and then you'll end up with something like this. R cubed. Okay, so if you sub in R equals 1 and R equals 0, get down to something like this. Okay, now I'll, le I'll leave you to integrate that. And lo and behold, you will get pi. So this is the same answer that we got just by evaluating the line integral. So they give us the same answer. We're happy about that. So we, you know, may, may, maybe Green's theorem is, it holds in uh, like we would want it to hold, but you know, let's, let's actually find out. Let's see. Okay, so we've got pi down here in our first method, and we've got pi in the second method as well. Here's an example. Suppose we're asked to evaluate this line integral over a triangle that's bounded by the following lines. <coughs> x equals 0, x plus y equals 1, and y equals 0. Okay, and we would expect the orientation to be positive if we're going to use Green's theorem, right? So, okay, so the best thing to do is draw a picture. So here we've got Our 
triangle bounding our region. Okay, this is going to be the line y equals 1 minus x. Now, if we were to use traditional methods for this problem, we would have to parameterize the three sides of the triangle separately and then do three separate line integrals. So that's very time consuming. If, it was, if we had a square or a rectangle up there, then we'd have to do four parameterizations. Parameterize each side and do a line integral over each side. Green's theorem gives us the power to simplify, um, simplify these calculations by changing it to a double integral. Okay, so m is y squared, n is going to be x squared. We want to calculate the partials. Okay, so we want the, the following partials. We want dm dy, that's going to be 2y, and dn dx is going to be 2x. So by Green's theorem, and again this is Green's first theorem I'm using, not Gauss's divergence theorem in the plane, we have the following. The line integral, where c has positive orientation here, it's the double integral of dn dx minus dm dy over our two-dimensional region. Okay, so if we sub in here and here, we'll get 2x minus 2y dA. So now we've reduced our, the analysis of our problem down to a double integral. It's not difficult to integrate. Okay, you can um, use the following upper and lower limits of integration. Okay, so essentially I'm using two parallel lines that are vertical and two non-parallel lines to bound y. So what are we going to get here? We're going to get something like 2xy minus y squared. Okay, if we sub this in, you'll get something like this. Now, I've, I'm dropping off some of the calculations here because I don't want to bore you terribly. Now, if you integrate this, you'll get zero. Okay, but I, I invite you to supply the details. Okay, so... Why does Green's theorem work? Why does Green's theorem work? Let's have a look at the proof. Now, the proof of... Anyone still going with this? All right. The proof of Green's theorem... It involves... A couple of things. And again, I'm proving the first theorem that I presented, not the second. But you can get the second as a consequence of the first and vice versa. Now, Green's theory, the proof of Green's theorem really only relies on simple things. It relies on the fundamental theorem of calculus, and it relies on Fubini's theorem, and a little bit of parameterization. That's it. Okay? That's all, that, that, that is all 
that the proof relies on. And you already know those things. Okay? All right, so. All right, so what we're going to do is do the following. Now, there's two, there's two identities, really, to be, or two equations to, to show um, hold. Uh, yeah, that'll do. I'm going to show that this double integral... Okay. Before I've used D, here I've used R. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to show that the double integral, negative of the double integral of dm dy over the rectangle is equal to this line integral. Okay, now here, don't, don't get confused. What I, what I really mean here is this line integral there. So that might look more familiar. Now, there is another identity to be shown, but I'm not going to show that because it's, it's very similar to the case I'm going to present. So I invite you to prove that for yourself. So the case showing the following... Okay. It's very similar to the first case. So I'm going to omit that. Now, to get Green's theorem, all you do essentially is just add these two identities together. And you get Green, the, the, the uh, equation in Green's theorem. So you prove the parts of it, add, add the two things together, and you've got it. Okay, so I'm going to label this first equation here as star, and this second equation as double star. All right, the reason I do that is because I'll come back to it in a minute. All right. So let's work with this, see if we can prove this. All right. The left-hand side of star is just the following, right? Now, remember, we're integrating here over a rectangle. So I can, I can write out the representation for my rectangle. It's just the following. Now, we know, we know from Fubini's theorem that I can switch the order of integration. It's a rectangle, right? The reason we would like to do that is to team these differentials, these dy's up, and then apply some sort of fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so there I've used Fubini's. Fubini's theorem. All right. Now, if you have an X simple or a Y simple region, so we're not, on a, not necessarily on a rectangle here, you can still use that method for more general re, re, uh, regions. All right. Okay, so what do we know about the fundamental theorem of calculus? Well, here we've got differentiation, and here we've got integration. So... We're going to have something like the following. Okay? 
All right, so we stop there. What, what we're going to do now is work on the line integral around the, the boundary of the rectangle and show that it's actually equal to that bottom line. Okay, so let's have a look at our rectangle. So along C1, we can parameterize by the following. Notice that along C1, the y value is constant, right? And x can be parameterized between A and B. All right, so that's one edge. Now all we do is go along the other edges in a specified direction. So along the right edge, we'll have this. All right, similarly on the top edge. So now we've got to be careful with the top edge because we're going, going the opposite way now to the bottom edge. So now it's from x equals b to x equals a. And finally, along the right-hand edge, so what's that? We've got x is a constant and y. y equals d to y equals c. All right, so we've got our parameterizations. Okay, so let's go back to the right-hand side of star. Uh, where are we? The right-hand side of our equation star and evaluate the line integral there. Ah, here it is, it's under here. Okay, so essentially what we're going to do now is calculate this and show that we get this. So the right hand side of star is just the following. I guess it's zero here, isn't it? Okay, so we split up our line integral into four parts around each edge. Okay, blah, 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 blah up to C4. Okay, so we have the parameterization for each edge, so we can easily substitute in now. All we need are the differentials. Okay, so this first one along C1 is going to be the following, after we substitute in. Okay? Along the edge C2, we're going to get 0. Along the edge C4, we're going to get 0. But the edge C1 and C3 are the interesting ones. Now here we've reversed the direction. Okay, so these two are the, are the, the, the um, non-trivial parts here. 
Now, we can, of course, reverse our integration there. And if we look back, that bottom line is exactly what we were looking for. All right? So, I won't bore you with the details for, evalu uh, for finding or proving double star. You should do that. You should do that. I invite you to do that. Okay? So once you have star and double star, just add them together to get Green's theorem. Okay? So we, we have that, 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 and this are the same. So you cool? You cool with that? The only thing is a minus sign out the front. Dn. Oh, dn dy. Sorry, you're absolutely right. Thank you. Let's have a look at the following problem. Evaluate the following line integral over a horseshoe. Now, up there I've got a semi-annual region. What I mean is a semi-annular region. Okay? It sort of looks like this line integral happens twice a year, but um, semi-annular. Annular. Okay? All right. Now, you may look, mate, mate, if you draw a picture of this, you go, hang on, hang on. This region isn't simple. So this is our setup. Well, Green's theorem in practice, applies to a whole bunch of regions, okay? If it's not a simple region, then we can always, well, for, for, for this context, we can always make it a simple region by slicing or by what's known as excising, which is just, just cutting out and removing parts of it, okay? So let's have a look here and see um, how to... Solve this problem. So let's let m be y squared and n be 3xy. We're going to apply Green's theorem. So dm dy is 2y, dn dx is going to be something like 3y. So let's apply Green's theorem. Obviously we need the right orientation. Green's theorem gives the following. Okay, it's going to be the double integral of this minus this. Okay, so 3y minus 2y dA. So we're just basically taking the double integral of y. Now, Again, you would think to move to polars here seems reasonable. 
So let's move to polars. So it's going to be, it's half a rotation, so our angle is between 0 and pi, and the radius is going to be between uh, 1 and 2. Okay, so basically it come, comes down to a double integral in polars, not too bad. So, I can split it up like this. So, integrate the first one, integrate the second one, and you'll get something like 7 on 3. Okay, so that example is quite mechanical. All we're doing here is setting it up, looking to ensure that Green's theorem holds, and then basically doing a double integral. Now, you can, of course, go the other way. You can, of course, go the other way. So, for example, if you had a very difficult um, line integral to do, uh, sorry, a, a very difficult double integral to do, you could evaluate a line integral instead. Okay, so Green's theorem can be used both ways. All right, well, that's about it. Um, I will see you this afternoon for more on Green's theorem. And in particular, we're going to look at um, strange regions with strange boundaries. So I'll see you there.